My name is uh, Olam Yahya Abbasi. I'm working uh, with CHA as Integrated Development Unit General Manager. And I'm graduated from uh, Kabul Polytechnic University. And uh, I work with CHA since uh, 1998. So uh, what is CHA? What are they doing? Yeah. What is the entire name and what does it stand for? Yeah. CHA is a Coordination of Humanitarian Assistance. Mm, and uh, CHA is a multi-sector organization. It established in 1987. And it's only in Afghanistan? It's in Afghanistan, yes. It's in Afghanistan. Before, during the Soviet Union war, uh, our main office, and also till the uh, end of the Taliban government, our main office was in Peshawar, Pakistan. And when uh, the new government came uh, in Afghanistan after Taliban, our main office shifted to here in Kabul. Okay. And it's established during Mujahideen, during the Soviet Union war in Pakistan in 1987. And it's more than uh, 20 years. Uh, CHA has more than 20 years experience working in Afghanistan. Yeah. And CHA working as a multi-sector organization, working in agriculture sector, health sector, education sector, and also community development sector. So what we are talking now about is education for secondary school, yeah. right? Uh, how would you describe the major challenges you are facing in Afghanistan for children who go to school at this age? Yeah, uh, as you uh, know in Afghanistan, before uh, this government, before ten, 10 years, there was no school in rural area, especially in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. especially for girls. And uh, when the new government came and the schools are open, and uh, a lot of people joined to schools, and now more than uh, 7 million people are uh, studying in schools. Uh, 7 million out of how many? How many people live here, just about? Maybe around, uh, I think there is 4 or 5 million out of school we have okay. children. And also the challenges which we are facing now in education in Afghanistan, uh, uh, there is a distance uh, from the schools and the residential area, especially in villages. Uh, there is uh, always a lot of uh, uh, students for in rural area. They are walking two hours, three hours to come to schools. And it's very difficult for girls to come to schools. And for also for some small children who are below uh, 12 or 10 years, and they are in primary school, it's very difficult for them to come to schools because of, because of distance. Uh, and also the government started to have some community-based schools and also some satellite uh, classes. Uh, they established, but it's not enough. It's not in overall Afghanistan, in some area. The other challenges is, uh, you know that during the Mujahideen and also during the Taliban regime, uh, the woman was not allowed to go to schools, to go to the universities. In this period, we have we faced a lot of lack of uh, lack of teachers, qualified teachers, okay. especially women. And even in some area, in some districts, we don't have 12 great graduated teachers, male teachers. Okay not female. Female is not, is not even one, pe one female is not present there as teachers. In some area we have below grade 12 teachers. And uh, also our teachers in Kabul in some schools we have 12 grade, uh, graduated teachers yes. and they are not capable. They, they don't have, they don't know about the methodology of training, how to teach, how to this uh, new teaching methodology, they are not aware. But the government started with support of international communities 
like USAID and World Bank, they started to teacher training program. And now uh, it's running in overall Afghanistan. What, but what, what special kind of projects are you doing here at CHA? And CHA we implemented since uh, 2003, for three years we implemented F1, um, F1 primary education program. It, uh, the aim of this program was to, to teach the overage children. It means the accelerated learning program. For example, two schools at one year. And we, we graduated more than 50,000 overage children from grade six in three years. Two years, one, two, two classes in one year. And this project was supported by USAID. Uh, and also it was a very good program. And with support of uh, CIC, Children in Crisis mm -hmm. organization, they worked on methodology of training. They teach a lot of trainers in this field from grade one to six. Mm -hmm. And they design a lot of curriculum mm -hmm. on that. At, that. at that time, the government also do not have uh, mm, a unique uh, mm -hmm. uh, curriculum for uh, this uh, uh, primary or secondary or yeah. high school. So we will, also, yeah, there is another program which we implemented. There was teacher education program. It had different component. For example, uh, teaching of NSET1 and service teacher training. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, training is focused more on uh, methodology of training. And also okay. NSET2, which was focused more on uh, subject knowledge. And also in C3 also, it's different from, from, for example, from one grade one to three, from four to six, and from seven to nine, and also from 10 to 12. Mm -hmm. It was different on subject knowledge. And also uh, there was a managerial training for uh, uh, school principals and headmasters. Mm -hmm. And also there was one component of this project was accelerated learning for teachers. The teachers, in some area we have below grade 12 teachers who have graduated from grade 6, okay. grade 7, grade yeah. 8 yeah. and 9. The program, the aim of this uh, component was to train uh, two years, uh, two grade and one year for teachers. For example, from grade 9, 9 to 10, 10 to 12. And uh, for example, uh, in two or three years, the teachers must be graduated from grade 12. And also, the, it was uh, uh, the future plan of Ministry of Education to, to continue with these people to graduate from grade 14, which okay. was a teacher training college yeah. so, in Afghanistan. Yeah, today we were just sitting together with a couple of partners talking about the possibilities of mobile learning. What can you see there? What is your vision? What can you think that can be, can be implemented in schools or also in teaching teachers? What kind of... Uh, As we uh, learn a little about this and also uh, see some documents and uh, read some documents about this new approach, because it's new in Afghanistan. Uh, there is a lot of improvement camps in Afghanistan on using of mobile because a lot of people I don't know about the exact uh, number maybe more than two or uh, five uh, three million people using mobile in Afghanistan now what do they use it for it's uh, just using for communication and also mm, what we are seeing that when the uh, children get the mobile they are thinking about what, what's, how it's working. They are going to the games, they are going to see what function of uh, or this mobile has. It's uh, very interesting, especially for mm, children, because uh, this age, for, uh, for example, for up to secondary education, the children are always thinking for new, for innovative thing, things. And mm, it may help the children to think, to improve their knowledge, to improve their thinking more than what 
the, they are learning in this books. It's a, a kind of supplementary teaching material for mm -hmm. uh, teaching of uh, teachers even uh, and students. It's I think it, it will be very interesting for yeah, do, for Afghans. Do you have this distinction between formal and informal kind of learning? Yeah. In Afghanistan, we have uh, in uh, in some area which is, uh, school is not present there. We have informal uh, the informal schools. How does this look like? It's uh, it's it's uh, every every year where there is in the mosque. It's not a place to just to be as like a class like a schools. There uh, there is a mosque. And the people are sending their children to learn the basic read and write, reading and writing, okay. not uh, uh, not other learning materials. So They're the mosque a... is a way to spread the word among the people in the areas. Sorry. So the mosque is a way to spread the word in areas. So you're using this actively to get what you want out there? Yeah, uh, this uh, uh, it's, it, it's very useful in some area because in, when we uh, when I was child uh, beside the formal schools I attended in the mosque to the mullah to learn from them but I found it very useful for me because it was a kind of support for uh, for my other subjects and then always uh, I when I'm thinking there is uh, there is not this opportunity in, especially in the cities because we was in the cities in Kabul when I was child and uh, I'll attend in the mosque for learning but now there is no, uh, in some area there is not this facility not available of these facilities because the people now thinking more than that they're sending their children to the courses to the uh, informal courses to learn english to learn new things in the uh, courses before it there was no courses in afghanistan so now it's private courses yeah it's getting better people yeah. want to be educated yeah yeah so how did you hear and this would also be my last question how did you get involved with butterfly works on this project great idea uh, yeah the, we we hope uh, because it's uh, our starting with butterfly and uh, uh, because we always uh, welcome new new innovative uh, uh, issues like this uh, uh, learning through mobile phone and uh, we hope uh, to, to go deeply in this new uh, new things and to to use it for uh, success of our project which we are piloting and uh, we hope to uh, get more information in the future and also to implement successfully this new approach in our uh, target area in Afghanistan and to be a, uh, a model project to copy this project to in other, areas. other areas in Afghanistan. And where does the money come from? The money comes from uh, Oxfam Nowet. Okay, to, so it's an NGO. Uh, to, yeah. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. Thank you.